Hey subscribers and watchers from Slide Nerd, this is Vivs here. In this video, I will show you guys how to make swipe tab using Android. So I'm using Android developer tools, which is nothing but a modified version of Eclipse. Here I have my main activity that extends fragment activity. Now if you guys remember, this fragment activity belongs to the support library, which is support.v4.app, which means if you want to use fragments before API version 11 or honeycomb, then you have to use the support library which lets you do that. To go to the activity underscore main.xml, what I have is a view pager that allows you to switch between different pages. If you guys have not seen my previous video about scroll tabs, please go back and check it out because there I have explained everything about the view pager in detail, what kind of adapters it uses, what are the methods and stuff. So first of all, we need three fragments so that we can switch between them, right? So let's actually go and make those fragments here. I'll show you guys how to make one of the fragments and then I will simply fast forward to make the other two. Now in Android there's a good option here in Eclipse that you can directly say Android object click next and you can directly select new blank fragment click next. I'll call this thing as fragment A. Make sure I don't want the factory methods or the interface callbacks and then click next finish and as you guys notice at this point everything has been constructed for us by your Eclipse. So it says fragment underscore, I'm gonna rename that, I'll shift R to rename stuff, I'm gonna say fragment underscore A over here, click OK. And here also it has been modified. So at this point, we have one of our fragments constructed. Now let's go to its layout, which is fragment underscore A. Here, I will just, just give a background color by saying Android background hash FFCC00, which happens to be one of my favorite colors. And then there's a text view for that, it says hello blank fragment, I don't want that. I'll simply change the text and I'll say now if you go to the graphical layout right now it says something like that so let me make the text large well never mind let me just put a small margin and that should give us a very good visual appearance now let me replicate this process of creating fragment B and fragment C and then get back to you guys so at this point what I have is fragment A B and C and there are three layouts which is fragment underscore A underscore B underscore C the difference between the three fragments is just in terms of the background color. So now let's get to the next step. We need to make our tabs. So to make a tab, first we need a reference to the action bar. So I'm gonna say action bar here at the top. I'll get a reference to that action bar by saying action bar equals get action bar. Now we need to set the navigation mode on our action bar as tabs by saying action bar dot set navigation mode. It has to be action bar dot navigation mode tabs now this tells the action bar that hey there's gonna be basically tabs that are coming up so get ready for that now the next step would be to actually create the tabs and add them that's pretty simple let me show how that's done for one of the tabs and I'll replicate the same process so I'm gonna say action bar dot tab which allows us to create tabs call it tab 1 then I'll say action bar which is our object dot new tab Remember, you cannot directly instantiate them. You just have to use your action bars object and call the dot new tab method on that. So I'm going to say tab one dot set text, which is going to be our text on tab one, which I'll call as tab one for now. Then I'm going to say tab one dot set tab listener. This now this tab listener is responsible for determining what should happen when your tabs are selected unselected the user moves away from them and stuff at this point there is an error so let's press control one in eclipse let main activity implement the tab listener again let it implement those methods here so as you guys notice there are three methods which is on tab reselected on tab selected on tab unselected so let me actually uh, create two other tabs out there by replicating the same step so at this point within the same code I have my three tabs which have been created the same way. I could have simply used a for loop and done this but then I thought it's best to stick with the traditional old style to show the beginners what is exactly happening. Next step I need to add the action bar, I mean the tabs to the action bar so I'm gonna say dot add tab and tab 1, add tab 2 and tab 3. Again that's merely a copy paste for all the three tabs. You have to make sure that you add the tabs otherwise they are not seen there. So at this point everything looks pretty good as far as the tabs are concerned. So let's just put a log.d statement inside the tabs and figure out what exactly happens when the user maybe selects a tab, when the user moves to a different tab kind of stuff. So let me actually copy paste the log.d statements under all the three methods over here. So at this point inside all my methods over there, the callback methods, I have a statement which says log.d 
For example, it says that the tab was reselected at the given position, which can be obtained by saying tab dot get position, and then the name of the tab, which can be obtained by saying tab dot get text. So everything looks pretty great right now as of now. So let's actually go ahead and run this. Try to find out what is happening with the tabs. So here I'm gonna click run at the top. So as you guys notice here right now, my tabs are being seen on the user screen that are just like buttons out there. And by default, when the app launches, it says on tab selected at position number one, at, at position zero, and name is tab one. So again, if I click on it, it says on tab reselected. If you guys remember, the tab reselected calls every time if you reselect the tab so if you guys notice over there the events are happening right in front of you so if i go to tab 2 now take a look what happens the tab 1 gets unselected the tab 2 gets selected stuff so again if i go back to tab 1 it is like on tab unselected at position number 1 which name is tab 2 and we selected the tab at position 0 with name as tab 1 again if i go to tab 3 on tab unselected at position 0 we went which is called tab one and then we went to select it as you guys can clearly see what is happening with the tabs right now what we want to do is based on the event that we select the tab we want to change the content here below with the view pager but before we do that we need to set up our view pager so in the next video i will show you guys how to set the view pager with its own callback methods and then we'll complete the swipe tabs so in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please subscribe to my channel let me know your thoughts in the comment boxes below and thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.